But we're in a digital age now. The world has changed entirely. You and I are in different countries talking digitally like we're in the same place together. Everything has changed. I, I wonder what made what inspired you to look into crypto more because looking at your background, you had a very traditional finance background. When you were at Goldman, Bitcoin wasn't even born yet. And so when a client of yours presented you with this completely new asset class, you know, you and like a lot of people didn't dismiss it. Why? I'm a macro guy. My job is to look for opportunity and then assess it. A lot of people go from the don't tell me what to do approach, which is more traditional. You know, I know what I know. Macro is all about what you don't know. Where is the opportunity? You know, that's why I talk about Iran, because nobody else is investing there. That's where alpha is generated. That's where you make money. So when somebody said, listen, I think there's a perfect asset here that really has this unique property of limited supply. I then looked at it and said, looks like gold to me. So I wrote the first paper back in 2000. 13, 12, uh, of, okay, if it's got the same attributes as gold, I look at its stock to flow ratio in a very crude way. And I said, this thing's probably worth a million bucks with gold at 1300 at the time. And that became quite a famous article uh, in Silicon Valley and on Wall Street. Um, and so it made me think, okay, here's something different. And it answers a lot of the problems. Yeah, I, I get this question a lot from people that I know and uh, and uh, investors who watch our show is whether or not blockchain is the way of the future. And I think uh, there is some confusion as to whether or not blockchain should even exist in the same sentence as gold, something with an established history of $5,000. What is your view here? They all exist together. Gold was the only answer for a parallel financial system. And it has always survived for that. So it's always been the denominator of which we can price things. So, you know, people who've been involved in gold in a long time know basically the price of a cow, a suit or anything else has basically held its value against gold. So gold is the asset of value. But we're in a digital age now. The world has changed entirely. You and I are in different countries talking digitally like we're in the same place together. Everything has changed. When something like Bitcoin comes, it offers a different solution that complements gold, doesn't take it away. They don't have to be one or the other. They just both work for different people in different times. And blockchain technology, well, forget all of the, you know, should it be Bitcoin? Blockchain itself is an amazing technology to verify trust. If you think of the financial markets, when a company like Lehman Brothers goes bust, nobody knows who owns what. There's not enough trust in financial markets. Blockchain solves all of this. Um, it also solves everything from custody to payments layers to settlement. And you can build these amazing applications like decentralized finance on top. So there, there's two revolutions going on. One is the revolution of money, which is Bitcoin. And one is the revolution of the entire Internet of value, which is all of these blockchains from Ethereum to, you know, whatever you, you choose, whichever blockchain you're looking at. In 2017, uh, the popular comparison uh, in media was that Bitcoin was like the tulip mania. Now, when you read these headlines, what went through your head? Were you still, did it, did it cause concern for you or did you dismiss them? So I was long most of 2017 and sold into the rally too early, but I, but I did, yeah, I did great. I made 10 times my money in that period. And yes, it was exhibiting a bubble phase. Now, tulips, as far as I know, still exist. They just don't trade for those prices. And gold has been through bubbles. And, you know, speculative manias are normal. Is the asset worthless or not? That's the question. Clearly, it's not now. It's lasted the test of time that there is a perceived value and trust in the asset. So will it go through speculative manias? All assets do. Maybe equities are in that now. And that's normal. That's just human behavior. But at the time, I was nervous because it was going up so fast. And I didn't yet understand as much as I do now. I've given retrospectively, I would have sold out again, maybe not as low as I did. You know, I think I sold out at two and a half thousand, it went up to 20,000. Um, 
I would probably do the same again because you don't need to have all the peaks and troughs. Um, you can try and time some of that cycle.